So today we're going to talk about basting. The most common basting for English paper piecing is thread basting, where you stitch the pieces through the paper and so that you have you'll have then you'll have thread stitches on both sides and that will hold it down and hold the fold. The issue with thread basting is that it's very time consuming, but it is also very relaxing. So it just depends on what your preferences are. But a lot of people for this English paper piecing of the Dear Jane are using glue. There are two different types of glue that I'm noticing being used. The first one is standard glue sticks that you can find pretty much at any store, like these Elmer washable glue sticks. These, are, these happen to be purple and they're very affordable. I've had issues with them because I tend to use a little bit more glue than maybe I should. And because they're designed for paper, yes, they are washable, but I hesitate to put water on my quilt because I'm not sure, especially from reds to whites, I'm not sure if it's gonna run if I use too much water. So I've had problems in the past, not a lot, but I have had problems in the past removing the papers. But like I said, it is significantly cost effective. What I like to use for glue basting is the Solang glue pens. And there's a bunch of different types of brands and they're all essentially the same thing. The refills work the same because they're like a kind of like a standard size. I'm not completely positive if they're all a standard size but they have a twisty thing that brings the glue up and then when you get to the end, which apparently this one's almost done, you've got this plastic and then this comes right off and then you put another one on and then twist it back down all the way and then use it till it gets to this point and replace it and that's how I do it. This is a blue and all the colors that they have turn white or clearish or but I haven't used it on black yet but it is water soluble so if you have marks and that they will come off and then the glue refills usually come in a two pack and this one is the blue refill I've used the pink I've used the purple I prefer the blue to the pink because what I've found is the longer that you keep them in the pen now I've used my pen for many many years but the longer you keep them in the pen without use the more pale that the paint gets and the whole point is to see that color on the fabric so that you know where you've put it and then it will turn to um, a blending color so I'm not sure if it's ecru or white or whatever so I have gone through quite a bit of this glue and that's why sometimes it's more cost effective to use the other ones. What I've done is I've used the other ones, the, the normal school glues, I've used those on um, some of the larger pieces. And that seems to work out well for me. But you can do whatever you want. You can thread baste, you can glue baste, whatever. So when I baste, what I'm going to do is I'm using my J7 as an example here. And I've already basted these. And squares, I like to baste opposite sides and then opposite sides. So then you don't have this twisty thing. I know some people that want to do it counterclockwise or clockwise. or Whatever you want to do is fine. I just like to have a consistent technique so that it just works out better that way. There's no, really no rhyme or reason. The, now for this, I'm basting these opposite. So this one you can tell that the very first folds were the top and the bottom and then the sides were the next fold. What this does is the first fold that you make is going to be your sharpest fold, the sharpest point because you have one layer of fabric on one layer of paper and you can see this right here. So that's the most accurate line. When you get to the secondary one it adds the thickness and you want to be able to make sure you know where the edge is. So I really do pull it tight without distorting the paper. When I put this on my fabric, I will take a piece and I will put a dot on one side 
and then put it on my fabric where I want it to go. That will hold my piece in place so that then when I'm doing my seam allowance cut, I just eyeball it. You can use the um, templates. They have templates for that kind of a thing. You can use a marking um, quarter inch or three, quarter, eight, three eighths if you want. Whatever your seam allowance is, just keep in mind that you can always cut it down more. You can't add fabric. And the tendency that I had at the beginning of this for some of these is to cut the smaller pieces with a smaller seam allowance. But with the fabric, with a general quilting cotton, as you know, these edges have a tendency to fray. And the less seam allowance you have, the more fraying you have down to the seam. And it becomes very difficult to sew those pieces together. So what I'll do then is I will take my pen, my glue pen, and there's you can slob it on all one thing here if you want. I like to put it on the very edge. So I'll take the edge of my pen, and it's a fat pen, so I, I like to you know use up the edges as I go. But I'll take the edge and I'll use the edge, and you can watch this go go clear. And I'll do that, and then I will fold this in, and I'm pushing this really, really tight. And with the what happens, what tends to happen then, if you're going to do it that tight, what tends to happen is on the edge of the fabric is, or the, where the where the paper is done. Excuse me, the fabric on the edge of the paper tends to go in. The nice part about that is that you then know exactly where your paper edge is. The bad part is if you have a, um, if you pull it too much and you have like a picture or something on the front, like these have this, you might have a tendency to distort that. But I'm not, I haven't had a problem with it because I usually do it in an area that doesn't matter. But that would be the only issue that I would foresee. So I'll turn this around and I'm dabbing this on here. I'm not just dragging it because if you're going to drag it, you're going to come, you're going to pull your fabric down with you and it's not going to be an even consistency. So I will drag it one way and then I will fill it in on the other. And that's when I'll come by here and push it down. And then I will take this and I will just do dabs here because when you're doing it on a basted edge you could pull this up again so I will do that and then I'll squish it down real good and I want to make sure I get this edge as best I can so I'll squish it down real good make sure it's on there and then I'll come back and I'll do the other side like so and squish it down real good so that's how I do the squares. And then this is going to end up being, let me make sure that this is the right side up because it's got a it's got a flower. So the flower is going to be this way. So I'll flip that back here and I'll put that there. And then those are going to be put together. This is a nine patch section that I'm going to do in rows. So I'll assemble this little row, this row, and this row. And then I'll assemble the rows together is how I do this with this kind of a block. So now when we're working on rectangles, it's very similar to squares. Instead of doing opposite sides and opposite sides, I always do the short sides and then the long sides. What this does is it gives me a crisper edge here on each side and then allows me to fold these over and keep that crisper edge. The second fold is a little bit more deep or wide or however you want to explain it and the other thing is is that I got to make sure that I keep my pieces in order and in the right direction this is a directional fabric and um, I have this curl on the bottom of these section of this section which I've designated as the bottom and the flower thing at the tip so once I cover my piece, I've lost my directional location. So now I want to make sure that they don't get flipped around and I check them before I stitch them together. So now we're on to triangle basting 
when we base triangles, there's a couple different ways to do it so that the tags are in different locations. In this situation, I've basted the outside legs of the triangle before I did the hypotenuse, and that that does is it takes the tags away from the hypotenuse of the triangle. So what I do with this, so that it's the same every time, is I will take my glue and I will turn my triangle, whichever way it's supposed to go, I will start like this and baste it on the edge here and then put this in like so. And when I when I cut my triangles, I cut the edges off on the ed on the corners because it gives me a better a, a little bit less bulky thing. But you still need to make sure you leave enough fabric for the seam allowance. So I uh, this one's a little shy. This is usually what I like to see on that. So then I'll turn it this way, and I make sure that I put it on top of this fabric part here, up to this, and then. I make I will push this closed real good. So I will make sure and I push this so I get a nice sharp edge. And then I will do this last. Now you don't need to go to the edge because the edge folds over when you have this. Let me do the pink one. So that this is the edge of your triangle, which you know, the edge of the seam, excuse me. This is your edge of the seam, so you don't need to have the glue go all the way to the edge. What I usually do is I will look to see where my papers are, and so I will start my glue here to about there so that it sticks to the paper, because with the size of this quilt, I don't like to use glue that I don't have to use because there's so much glue that gets used on these pieces. So then I'll pick this up, and I'll press it, and I'll feel the corner so I so I can get the best possible point here and then I'll come to the other side and do the same thing on the edge and then you get this little pucker effect so you want to just kind of work your way in from the outside and then lay it down and that's how I based a triangle with the tags away from the hypotenuse other times you're going to want to put the, the tags towards the hypotenuse for various reasons. In this block, I wanted the tags to go away so that they didn't come into play in the seams. So what I did is I basted the hypotenuse first and then I did each leg. So it just depends on what you need your triangle shape to work. So now we're going to talk about the gathering stitch method for outside curves. And the most common outside curves you're going to find in this Dear Jane quilt is the little, what I call little footballs. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your knotted thread and you're going to start by putting your needle through the paper and the thread knot from the, the, from the pretty side, the right side of the fabric, you're going to pull your thread through so that your knot is on the top. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, my knot's on the top. So I'm going to start with my gathering stitch right about here. And I'm just going to make these little stitches away from the paper, but not to the complete end. If you go too far towards the end, then you're going to get some fraying happening. So... I'll just do a few stitches and then pull my thread through, I hope, and my dog's still wanting to participate in this whole section. So I'm going to go down this the length of this until I get to the end. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull your fabric relatively evenly. The smaller the stitches, the better you are, but on the other hand, you don't want to sit there and do this forever. So I take, you know, ish size stitches for whatever shape I'm doing. And as you can see, as I'm doing this, it's gathering up. So I've reached the end of this, and I'm going to pull this through. And if I, if I pull my thread like that, you can see that I've gotten that whole curve. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, 
starting about here. And if you notice, I've clipped off the ends of these. That's so I don't have that little pointy tag of fabric when I fold these in. So I'm going to go down the edge of this all again. And then as I pull, it starts to do all this. And you're going to go through this one more time with a different stitch. So I'm just pushing these on my fabric. I'm getting a little close to the edge. It's always better to have more fabric than you need than not enough. Because you can always take fabric away if it's too much. You can't add to it. Just like cooking. You can put more salt in, but you can't take it out. So, almost done. And now I'm at the edge of my piece. So I'm going to come, I try to come within, in, into this right type of, or this fold, I should say. I try to come within this fold without fraying, and I pull this. Then I'm going to, so I'm, if I pull this, I can see that I've got this gathered, but it's not terribly pretty. It's, it's okay, but now it's time to make it a little better. And this is where my stiletto comes in. So what I'm going to do, my needle wants to fall off my thread here, which is pretty common for this thread I'm using. This is a, a hand quilting thread of, of great thickness because I just happen to have it, and I can really pull on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stiletto and I'm going to pull these down and hold these with my thumb. And what I'm doing, I'm not going to fold the paper. I'm not going to pull so much that the paper is going to be misshapen, but I'm going to pull it down on the edge. And I'm going to start and I'm going to thread baste now that I've got this gathering stitch on there. And so as I do this, you can see my edge it's coming in and I'm just going to go down this and pull these down and stitch no oh, I've got to come back through this way and then I'm making kind of big bigger stitches because it doesn't have to be fantastic what this does is it puts the fabric closer to the edge so it's easier to applique so I've done my thread basting so I could pull this edge tight all the way around. And I'm going to then pull my thread to the front. I'm going to try to put this, put this tag down as much as I can. Whoops. I don't want to create a funky knot, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm going to pull this to the front, and then I'm going to knot this off at the front. I want to keep all of my knots on the top surface so I can easily remove my basting, because my basting comes out of my applique before the papers do, once it's been attached to the block. So I'm just making sure that I get just the thread, I'm not snagging the fabric with my needle, and I got that thread too. So, I'm going to pull that out and then finish making my knot. So, close enough. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tag on my thread just so I can not have to have it untied. So, that's how I baste a football and prepare it for applique. So this is where you're going to learn how to handle the inside curves. And inside curves are this part right here. This is considered an outside curve. And I handle the outside curves like I handle the footballs with the gathering stitch method. So on this situation, you've got both. So what you're going to do, because you do the stitching for the outside curve, you're going to do this first so you can stitch through the bits that are glued down. So I've already clipped this. And for my um, seam allowance, I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to about, it's hard to say, 
So I'm going to do this in sections. The bigger the, the sharper the curve, the more notches you need. And so over time, and what, you, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, but I'm going to cut almost to the paper. You don't want to undermine because, you know, this is woven fabric and it frays. So you're going to cut almost to the paper. And then you're going to cover the rest of that when you go to um, stitch it. So I've got this notch and I still have some, I'd say about 16th of an inch of fabric still sitting there. So then I'm going to go to my next section. And... You can always do more, but you don't want to do more than you need because you don't want to have places where the fabric can get undermined. So it really is kind of a balancing act. So I'm just cutting these, just cutting right to the edge with that little bit of seam allowance. Well, it's not really a seam allowance, but I'm going to leave a little tiny bit of fabric. Okay. So now I've got all of my little notches, and I'm going to take my glue... And I'm going to put my glue, you can put your glue on your fabric, but I usually will pull out so I don't end up pulling the fabric with me. But sometimes it goes over the paper. This is a thinner piece, so I will most likely just sit here and do this. I'm going to sit here and put my glue on my paper all the way around where it needs to be and you need to make sure that you go past this so that the, the fabric sticks to itself. So I'm going to just push this in with my fingers and I'm pulling as tight as I can without fraying the fabric so that it takes this curve on. So I think it's better to do it on a flat surface but sometimes I'll pick it up that didn't seem to work so I put it back down. And then this is a large curve and my glue starts to dry so I'll put some more on here because I'm trying to just put a light layer so I don't use so much glue. But you know when the color goes away you need to put some more there. I'm just going all the way around and so that's how I'm going to base my inside curve and that's how I've done it through all of my inside curves. This one's sticking up a little bit. So I'm just going to come back here and take it, tack it down. And now I'm ready to use my gathering stitch method on the outside curve. So now we're going to go handle the trapezoid. And it's obviously just like a triangle here. But the, the, um, the difference comes when you get to this angle right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste the shorter sides first. And I'm going to get to the glue on here when you're when you're basting on the fabric you want to do it in short strokes because this is the bias of the fabric and so if you pull on it against you're gonna stretch it out so I'm just gonna start in the middle and push it towards the edge and then I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing oh, my caps coming up there we go I'm gonna come over here and just I probably there you go and then do the same thing over here and sorry about my camera moving all right so then down here with this long side you've got the acute angle angles that are smaller than 90 degrees and then I'm going to just baste, I'm going to put the glue where the paper is. I don't need to go past that because it'll just be open. This is one I've done already. And you see that it's got, you don't have to go all the way out. But if you do, you know, the glue will dry clear, so it's okay. But so I'm just going to work on putting glue along the fabric here. And then I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to come to this edge and I'm going to find that and push that down real nice so I can get a sharp edge. And I'm going to push that down to about there. And then I'm going to go to the other one. 
and do the same thing. You want to have this as crisp as possible. And then I'm going to come in here and push this against the edge. I come on here and occasionally it'll pleat here in the middle. Just kind of work it out as you go. And then you've got this. Now, when you fold the fabric on an obtuse angle, it doesn't always hit the right point. Because it'll, it'll, yeah. So when you actually go to sew it, you're going to have to feel where that point is. But in this situation, that's why you want to try to get this really up against the correct edge, even if it goes and pulls a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to put my glue on my folded areas and then right here. And I'm going to do the same type of thing as I did on the bottom section. And I'm going to try to feel where the edge of this is. And I'm going to push this in. And you can sometimes tell a difference. But when you go to assemble this, it's going to be, it can be a little off. So you can fix that when you go to stitch it. See that pleated a little bit, but that's the that's the how I handle the obtuse angles, and the re the the other thing is you can kind of see I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is maybe if I move my light I don't know um, this is sticking up a bit, and however much that sticks up that changes where that corner is here. So that's why you have to try to feel, because when I go to line this up with another piece, occasionally it's not exactly right. And this has got like a bulge here on the edge. So it's, well, this is lined up here. This is not necessarily lined up there. And I can stitch that closer together. But do know that that's the fabric fold and not the paper when you go to assemble it. So that's how I handle my trapezoids.